Hey, this is Steven from RC Engineer, uh, RC Engineering. Uh, we're going to uh, be going doing another development series video. Here in this video, I'm um, actually two videos behind. I have uh, this one here, and then I have the one from uh, last week. Um, I I didn't uh, do. Um, I was doing finals for school, so I wasn't able to do it. So uh, this video, we're going to talk more about the drone, the uh, the aerial photography drone, and uh, the other video will be a battery for the uh, VR 006s. All right, uh, so we're going to talk about it for uh, 30 minutes or so. We're going to go into uh, battery selection. Um, uh, last video we talked about some of the things that we want to uh, have on it and what I would like to actually do is do a Trello for it. I don't know if I have, um, I'll even have to look to see, do I even have one for RC? I don't think I even have one for RC engineering. So I might have to create one just to put the specs for this thing. Uh, let's see if I can create it in a few minutes. It's actually just a few pieces of information here. Okay, now I need to check my email. There we go. For email address. Okay. Um, custom aerial photography drone. Okay, I'm creating a board. All right, there we go. So here's the board, and it's on the RC engineering. RC, yeah, RC engineering. And so, okay, so let's go ahead and. So this one is a uh, features. So number one, I want to have 21. Plus, and this is going over what we were talking over last video, 21 plus uh, light, 21 plus minute. Twenty-one plus minute flight time folds up to I don't have to have everything capped. Folds up to size of Mavic Pro. I'll probably go with just the Pro on this one. I need it to be a little bit bigger than the Mavic Air. Um, it'll hold at least a uh, GoPro Hero 5 session um, camera gimbal obviously GPS iNav or whatever iNav firmware what else no obstacle avoidance or anything like that. Um, what else needs to go in there? I don't think really anything else. Camera gimbal, GPS, INAP firmware, my firmware. Also, I would like to be quiet. Oh, and then use crossfire. So long range. This is a TBS crossfire. Yeah. So that's basically it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, figure out the features here. <coughs> so I did, uh, I think it was the last month's um, I think it was last month's, uh, what was it called? Uh, Rule of Thumb series where we talked about uh, battery sizes. We talked about lithium ion versus lipo. And uh, so now this is where it comes into play, where we're going to uh, find um, why lithium ion is the best set for this particular setup and what that would actually look like. And 
One second, I'm gonna get up and turn on my light, but I'll keep talking. Why that's the best setup, but why it gives us limitations on how much power we could use to uh, to run these motors and how we're going to solve that. So in these two, in this video here, we're gonna look at that battery setup, and we're also gonna look at how we're going to uh, be able to work around that uh, with. Um, I just noticed something fell off my wall. How we're gonna work around that with the uh, with the motors? How we have to size the motors correctly in order to get that to work? All right. So, um, yeah. So that's it there. So let's go ahead and look at the list and size of batteries, and then we're going to go on uh, Venom's website, and we're going to compare them to some lipos on Venom. And uh, so normally on the uh, DJI Phantom, we run uh, two, we run 2,200 three cells, and this one for at least the uh, weight, for at least the power that we need to do, we're going to be behind the cell count, because with lithium ion, again, they have very, very small uh, discharge rating, so a very, very low discharge rating. I mean, so in order to get it to work pro uh, work fully, you need to have um, you need to be very very selective on your power supply so the main one right now is the main lithium ion cell is called the 18650 that is the number one cell right now it's not the only one only cell but it is one of the main cells that uh, cell size that they're doing the most research and innovation into so as you can see it's used in a whole bunch of different vehicles Tesla Roadster Model S Model X electronic cigarettes and LED flashlights. It is where they're putting a whole bunch of innovation into as far as having the highest energy density per weight. So that is uh, amount of capacity over weight. Um, yeah. So they're making that the best that they possibly can uh, because all these giant companies are putting so much innovation in there. Electronic cigarettes is a big one like vapes as you see in there. Those are mainly used 18650s, and the Model X, Model S, and uh, Tesla Roadster are all using um, the 18650 cells. So those companies, they want the cheapest product, but the biggest capacity uh, for the least amount of weight, as well as best price. So 18650 right now is the big portion of the market. Now the 18650 has a typical capacity of 1500 by 3600 and the reason why it's called 18650 is it's 18.6 uh, millimeters in diameter by uh, about 50 millimeters long. 50.0 millimeters long. So that is that is the size. So basically these are all the sizes. You can see here 1443 is 14 millimeters in diameter by 43 millimeters long. So Let's now that we have that. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Amazon, and let's look up uh, eighteen six fifty, and we're gonna look up. And another thing that you want is that the casing itself is extremely heavy. Is the heaviest part? Well, it's not the heaviest part of the battery, but the inside is the heaviest. But you want to get the largest capacity you can for each number of casing, and these are the same as lithium ion. They could charge fully to 4.2 volts and they're nominal at 3.7. So it's pretty much um, the same exact thing as a LiPo. So you need the same number of cells to get the same cell rate, uh, the same overall voltage. So if you have a 3 cell, which is 11.2 volts nominal, 11.1, 11.1 volts nominal, you're going to need 3 cells. Same exact thing. So uh, if we're going to have three cells, we might as well have the most capacity per the weight of the outside of the cell. The housing, the button top, the button bottom, we want as much uh, capacity that we can out of having that specific cell. Because all the cells are the same size, uh, they just have different weights and uh, for the density and also different costs for the density. So you want to uh, not um, have as much as you can out of this one uh, a, a steel or aluminum. I think it's aluminum shell. So 18650 and the max that we could get on the 18650s is 3600 milliamp hour. 
Uh, there are some other ones online that say that they're higher, but that's kind of the end range of uh, what they're rated for. So here, I mean, you kind of just have to, oh, we're going to look at them. Uh, there are some that have really, you can see that they're very, very high rated. But uh, something like this one, what we're going to do is we're going to go to one that uh, has the weight in it. So here, capable of high current discharge of 7 amps, current discharge. Uh, continuous discharge is 3.6 amps. Uh, wait, 7 amp continuous discharge and 3.6 amp uh, charging current. So this is a pretty, pretty uh, high discharge cell. Right here it recommends a 2 milliamp charge rating. So that's a, that's a 0 0.5, it's almost like a 0.5 C rating for charging. That's not that great, but that's kind of how they always are. Contains two high power MOSFETs in the current regulation module for better efficiency and output. So automatically protects against overcharge. That's not really the best situation, but it would work. So here they want $25, and they're expensive. They're expensive for the highest uh, maximum capacity possible. And they're good for 500 charges. So discharge current six amps. So this is also a high uh, high discharge. Uh, but what we're looking for is the weight, 1.77 7 ounces. Does this one have it? This, these cells look pretty nice here. But they're a little bit cheaper, but $20 a cell. So you're talking about like a $60 battery for the highest capacity possible. Okay, let's do two grams. So it said 1.77. <coughs> That's 50 grams, so they're about the same. So this one's 52 grams. All right, so 52 grams uh, times three, because we need three to make three cell. We could also go four cell. Uh, three times that is a, um, 150, uh, 150, 156, 156. Let's go ahead and look at an equivalent. So um, let's look at what I normally fly and as far as the lipos inside of the DJI Phantom version one. So let's go ahead and go into 3-cell. The reason why we're using Venom is I have a lot of their batteries, and their website's really, really nice to navigate, so it's really easy to find the stuff that we're going to be talking about here. So here's a 2200. Oh, it's a 50C. That's why it's really expensive. Okay. So this one is 50C, 176.3 grams. So let's look at um, let's look at like a like a transmitter receiver plug. So the reason why is that generally the the heavier the cell is, the generally the higher the C rating the cell, the heavier the cell. So I want to kind of take that out of being something and uh, just show you that um, something that is uh, similar C rating as uh, these batteries. So these these batteries uh, that I showed you, this guy here is 3600 and it does um, let's say up here at the top 7 amp continuous so that's uh, that's about two. That's about two C. So seven amp divided by uh, this guy is three point five. Let's just say three point five. So three point five times two is seven. So that's about a two a two uh, two C rating. And this guy is a five a five C rating. So it's a five C rating, but that's not including the max burst. Is uh, the max burst for these guys is probably around the. Um, around the 10, 10 amp, but it says that it has something in there that's going to regulate it so it doesn't blow it up. That will just kill the battery, that it will just, you know, disconnect the battery uh, to not have it blow up, so. Um, this is 5C, so similar. So this guy is 138 grams. So 138 grams versus 150, but this is a 2400. And this guy is a 3600, so that's 1.2, that's actually exactly 1.5 times the capacity. 
uh, it's one and a half times because uh, half of 2400 is 1200 1200 plus 2400 is 3600 so it's one and a half times this guy but it's almost the same weight it's 20 grams heavier than this guy so let's see here So 150 grams divided by 138. That's um, minus one. Oop. Minus 100. So that's that's uh, almost nine percent. Nine percent more uh, more weight. The um, the uh, lithium ion setup, but 3600 divided by 2400. And yeah, so I mean, obviously minus one times, yeah, I mean, it's divided by 10, divided by 100. That's uh, 50%. So that's what that last number is, 50%, and then this is 9%. So for an additional 9% weight, you get 50%. The um, uh, fifty percent um, more more charge, but of course that's assuming that um, no no basic cable that attaches. So it's probably going to be more like twelve fifteen percent um, more weight for for that much capacity. Okay, so let's look and see how that scales. So let's say you have four cells. That's that's two th that's two hundred. So let's see uh, if it scales the same for four cell. Another thing also I want to look at, let's go 3 cell and let's find a similar, um, let's find a 3600, what the 3600 would weigh. C rating, but 224 grams, so that's more than a 4S. Okay, so how about a 4S? Let's go for a 4S pack. Let's go again for a 2200. It's talking about a starter for cars, it looks like. So this is a 20C. We see like it's it's it scales about the same. So we're saying that now we're talking about a uh, let's open this one up. Now we're talking from 200, which is four times fifty is two hundred, so um, one eighty seven divided by two hundred. That's 6.5 percent uh, he um, heavier. So it does it does scale pretty well, as you can see. So, but this again is a 30 seat, so it's probably not going to scale that well. So it's probably going to be you know eight to ten percent lighter. So that's where our uh, big advantage comes in. So it's about 50 percent better uh, energy density than uh, the lithium ion. I mean than the lipo, but the lithium ion is only good for 2C compared to even the lowest C rating on a transmitter pack of 5C. So this guy's looking pretty good. Um, let me see if we'll look at one more. So these are Panasonic cells. It 
So yeah, another thing also with lithium ion is you could discharge down to 2.5 volts and still be okay, not damage the cell. So this one's five. Uh, this one's 1.5 C, which is five amps. So overall, looks like those ones up there are the best uh, best setup. So that will give us the uh, best energy density for the weight. Now, uh, how are we going to go about getting that type of performance down to uh, what we need? Because we only have seven amps to work with. Unless we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff in parallel, we're in trouble. And we're talking seven amps. We're talking four motors divided by seven amps. Uh, talking seven amps divided by four motors. we're talking 1.75 so what we might have to do is we might have to bump that up to 4 cell because again uh, voltage um, so let's say we need the same amount of wattage but we need to supply uh, we need to supply less current the only way to get power power is voltage times current the only way to do if you're keeping power the same so V uh, V times I voltage times current is equal to power so if we keep power the same and we need to drop the amount of current the only way to do that is by increasing the voltage so we might need to jump uh, to uh, 4s and that's a total of 200 grams and so that will allow us to drop uh, the wattage of the of the um, the entire motor by a fourth right because we're going from three cell four cell so how are we going to go about doing that let me show you and this one I haven't seen done on very I don't think I've ever seen it done on a quadcopter I've seen it sort of something close but never on a photography quadcopter so here's the thought the thought is to is to make it geared is to make it a geared motor using in runners so these are uh, these are the easiest ways of attaching um, motors to them uh, motor uh, attaching uh, gearboxes to motors uh, because they ha the overall bell does not spin and they have small little holes to where you can almost adapt them into uh, places where you see uh, brush motors it will almost fit in the same exact spot as a brush motor so here we have a few options here's like they're small here's like they're a pretty good deal it's a 2435, so 24 uh, millimeter diameter rotor by a 35 uh, millimeter length rotor, and it's a 5,000 kV, and it's going to have a lot of uh, a lot of what's it called um, a lot of oomph there for uh, for its um, torque. So you see here that we have a two amp idle current, so we're going to have to be even almost under that but that's pretty hard to do because it's it takes at least two amps just to get this thing spinning so you might have to even decrease our um, size of that guy even more so that we're running on even smaller so something like a, a 2030 but I think even this one was a one cell rated it's a two cell rating so the, these ones are not really rated for anything that small here we see some brushed these are brush quad co these are brush motors pushed into a, a, a nylon gearing system, similar to what uh, what the plan for this guy is. This one I liked quite a bit. It's a pretty pretty small motor. It's a uh, 1230, so 12 millimeter diameter by a 30 millimeter length and a 5300 kV. This guy will run a 3s. Uh, it is on back order for 10 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. There's a few other options. Here's another 1230. This one's in stock, but this one's for some reason a similar one is rated for 2s. We might be able to get away with 3s, but um, I don't know about 4s. So, and this one's oh, it's a higher kV. So a higher kV generally um, you can get uh, generally it's a lower kV that you can get away with a uh, higher cell count. But that guy's right here. That's a 4500 versus a 5300. And so what we'll do, we have another uh, five minutes here, five, six minutes. So we're going to go on to my prop calculator. What was it called? Um,
So let's go ahead and look at uh, if that was the case. So this guy is a uh, 12. Let's look at this guy because it's kind of the only guy that we have access to right now. And let's say that we're running that guy in 3S. Cell count 3S, and again the the cell count we're just going to average that at 4.0. Uh, air speed, we're saying 22 miles an hour. Uh, that's the max speed. Oh, that's another thing I need to put in here. Max speed of at least 22 miles an hour, just like just like all the other um, kind of drones that DJI has. 22 miles an hour and now the RPM is what we're going to look at and basically we're going to move the RPM and the diameter in order to get the right J. The J has got to be 1.1. That's where you're going to get the most uh, efficiency. Here we have the 13, almost 13 grams, gram force per watt and this is basically going to determine how big of a frame that we can make if the, if the props don't fold, uh, fold in or do anything like that. So let's go ahead and look at this guy. So here's the KV. Uh, for maximum power, but we want the KV here for maximum efficiency. So this is 351 KV. But uh, I don't believe this one's uh, uh, set up for um, basically the gearing, but this is the output gearing. Um, so we're talking about uh, input versus output. This is the speed that you want to be spitting at. And this is only 35 RPM. Theoretically, the smaller that we make the prop, I mean the bigger we make the prop, the slower it spins, the less noise it's going to have. So the bigger the prop we use, the less noisy it's going to be. So let's go ahead and jump this up to almost maybe like a 7 inch prop. What I can do is I'll go grab my DJI and I'll look at what kind of, what size props that guy is using right now. So I can go ahead and pick this guy up. And I got my calipers, my digital, my digital calipers here. Not very good calipers, but It'll work. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into inches. From one tip to the center. I'm just going to measure the radius and multiply it. So this is a four inch prop. So four inch radius. So four times four, four times two is eight. So this is an eight inch prop. And we're probably going to have to be somewhere around there, but obviously on this plane it's spinning it way faster than it needs needs to be. That's why it's super noisy. I'm running on three cell, just like the Phantom. Uh, airspeed, so we need to drop our increase RPM or decrease. Yeah, decrease RPM. Decrease RPM till we get to 1.1. Increase slightly. Increase slightly again. Is rescaling it so I can get more of a accurate run here. Okay, so it's slightly bigger than 2530, slightly bigger than that. There you go. Oh, exactly 1.1. Wow, look at that. So JMAX 1.1 is 12 volts. Air density, this guy, so what are we looking at? Thrust, 144 grams per. It's pretty low. Um, what are we talking about? So, uh, do I have anything to weigh the Phantom? I could weigh the Phantom uh, with no battery, so we're talking 200 grams. So let's go ahead and create another column for, this is gonna be weight. So 200 gram, oh this is a 150 gram battery. Lithium ion, Li, ion, 3 cell, 3S, D. So 3S, yeah. Uh, frame is probably gonna be similar. Uh, what is the weight of a um, 0 0.5 session?
Okay, Hero Flight Session is 73 grams. It's 73 grams. Uh, frame is going to be similar to the DJI Phantom frame. I'm going to pick it up and take a guess at what this is here. I'm going to say that this is maybe out the camera. I think it's definitely more than uh, the other thing I have. I think only measures 500 grams. The scale that I have, I think I brought it in here. It might still be, it might still be over in the other room, uh, in my roommate's room. So, 500 grams. That's one pound. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna measure that, but I think it's gonna be. Let me see. Let me look at. Yeah, so here it says 1,400 grams. That's all up weight, so that's including the battery, uh, which is 180, what was it, 183 grams. That's this one, the other one was 127 or something. So let's finish this up here. That's all up weight, so I'm just gonna take that off um, and say that that's kind of around where it is. But I'm gonna say that's probably around 1,000 grams which is 2.2 pounds, which is one kilogram, 1,000 grams, uh, one kilogram. This guy is 173 grams. So I'm gonna say that other, the camera that's on it is probably two gram, uh, 200 grams, so let's say, let's say it's gonna, I'm gonna say the Mavic Pro, Mavic Pro weight. Let's actually go with the Mavic Pro weight. Mavic Pro is probably more uh, similar. Weight, battery, and propeller is included. 700 battery and propeller included. So 734 grams. And it's using a camera, Wi-Fi, remote controller, charger, gimbal, app, live view, where's the battery? Oh, intelligent flag battery. This is 3830 3 cell. Um, so that's probably at least 3300. 30, uh, 3, so that's at least um, maybe 250 grams. So I'm going to say it says here it's 740. Uh, it says 743. 740. 7. 43, 734, 734 grams. So I'm going to say that it's um, probably around 480, 480 grams. It's 480 grams. So we're talking 480 plus 73 plus 150 is equal to 700 grams. 700. say 700 grams all of weight. So we're looking here at an 8 inch and I definitely don't think it's 8 inch props on it. And here the max speed is 40 miles per hour on the Mavic with a 21 overall flight minute time. We need to, we're going over time here but uh, Anyways, um, I can't find where it says the size of props. I'm sure it's very similar. Anyways, um, yeah, so let's look at that. So we're look let's go ahead and put these specs in for a prop. So, oh. 
So props are uh, eight inch props, and we're talking that we need um, 2640, 2640 uh, final RPM, and uh, airspeed 22 miles an hour. Three S, and we're looking at 144 gram thrust. So we're not going to be able to make it with four four motors. You're gonna be under. Hmm. Okay, but look at our efficiency. We're at almost 13 gram, 13 grams per wall. So, um, 13 grams per watt. That's insane. That is insane. And we're pulling one amp at that that amount of grab with that much. So total is 11 watts. So I mean, we could increase this to nine inch. Let's see what we could get. Okay. It's 177. Seven oh eight. That might actually work. Let's just say that that's one point one. <laughs> we're similar. Or now we're up to one point one amp. So let's change that. So I'm gonna say we're gonna run a nine inch prop. Try to get a, try to make a nine inch. What we'll probably have to do is make a nine inch foldable. Uh, and then the RPM twenty three hundred. 2310, 2310, uh, 22 mile, and then this is um, 177 grams. 177 grams. That should be perfectly fine because uh, we'll definitely be dropping up this uh, this weight here. Say this is max. I definitely want it uh, way less than a Mavic Pro. I want it to weigh as much as a Mavic Air. Um, wait, this last thing we're gonna look it up. We're uh, almost six minutes over. Takeoff weight four thirty. Um, So that that will work perfectly fine. So, and this is um, 1.1 amp, All right? 1.1 amp, 1.17 amp. So we might even drop that down to an eight inch. Okay. So what that means is that we we're gonna look the final thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at uh, so this is motor motor speed and uh, so the KV is so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna say the KV is um, 4500 Uh, so that means that 3s 3 times 11.1 equals 33.3 whoop sorry 3 times uh, 3.7 
is equal to 11 times 4,500. So equal to this, and to get maximum efficiency, we're, we want to run it at 80% uh, um, speed, so that's about 40,000 RPM. 40,000 RPM maximum efficiency. So what kind of gearbox is that? So we need to go from 2300 divided by, so uh, 40, where are we at? So 40,000 divided by 2310 that's a 17.3 17 17.3 to 1 so you need to have a 17.3 times larger uh, input drive and let's say the input drive is around let's say 0.2 inches so 0.2 See so the input drive is 0.2 inches, and we're going to times that by 17.3. That's equal to 3.46 inches. So it's going to have, a, have to have a big old uh, output gear. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it. So these are kind of the the stuff that we need to know. It's looking looking really really good. I'm uh, I'm really optimistic that this thing is going to be super great and hopefully go way over that 21 minute time. I want to shoot like 45 minutes, but we'll see. All right, so this has been Steven from RC Engineering. I hope you guys like this video. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like it. If you want to support my uh, my work here, go ahead and check out uh, uh, my Patreon uh, in this summer. Uh, the link's in the description. This summer I'm going to be working on a lot more exclusive content for the Patreon. I will see you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.